Now this is the first skyscraper built on the planet. How many buildings in Manhattan is more than 20 stories high? They were building this when there was no cranes, no elevators, none of that. Think about what I want you to reflect on from today onward, to reflect upon the genius conceived by the Africans. This is the um, funerary complex, as an enclosure of the gods, it's called. And it was built during the third dynastic period, that's uh, 27 to 2670 BCE. That's the before the Christ era. And this structure was built in honor of the deities of both Upper and Lower Egypt, but in particular when we get inside, we will see the triad of, uh, of the North, which include Pata, uh, Nefertum, and Shegmet. Imhotep, while we accredit him with being the world's first multigenerous and so forth, Imhotep came from a line of architects, a tradition of architects. One of the uh, Part of his family line is his, this architect is known as Kanufor, one of the first recorded architects. But there's a pharaoh whose name was Kasakemwe that built the first complex, the first complex like this one, but albeit it was built out of adobe. It, this, this complex still exists until today. And, and so Imhotep had the benefit. You see, we have to pass this on to our, our young people in particular. They think that they have arrived and everything that they know comes out of their own minds and their own genius. We will see throughout this Nile Valley where people give praises to their ancestors. They always credit those who came before them. And so Imhotep follows in this line of architectural genius. Kanufor, Kasakemwe, Imhotep. You're not going to hear these names. But, but they, they did exist. So Imhotep didn't wake up one night and say, okay, I'm going to build a step pyramid. He had several thousand years of tradition to build upon. After Zosa ran his symbolic marathon, proved his fitness, symbol of fertility, agriculture god, he is the one who is going to make sure that the crops grow for the next period. He comes here and he's not only convinced, or he doesn't only want to convince the people in Egypt that he's physically fit. He goes now, he comes to this court here, let me show you what he did. He comes over here to these 10 kiosks, or these 10 shrines. And he goes in the shrines, and in each one of the shrines, there is a deity, his ancestors. And he goes before them and says, listen, I've done well for the people of Egypt. I've made sure that everyone was well fed, well clothed, well sheltered, just as what Ra and Ptah and all the deities wanted me to do. So now I come in obeisance to seek your permission to rule over Egypt for 30 more years. 30 year cycle measured what is called the Hebseb, the Jubilee, after the coronation, 30 years after. He comes for renewal. So he comes to the chapel, follow me, just like Zozer, pretend that you're Zozer. And he comes over here to the altar where the deity is. Go in there and see the deity. Now, what you saw in there, uh, um, Neil, what did you see in there? You saw nothing. There's nothing in there. This is what is called a false door. It is a symbolic precipice between the physical world and the spirit world. You can't see the people in, in the ancestral world only if you are transported by the spirit. 